my view is that the world is full of positive and negative forces and the job of every sensate person on the planet, probably for the next 30 years, is to define the terms of our interdependence and to find some way to do something that advances a positive definition of interdependence. So the most important political book I've read in the last three years was a book written by the double Nobel Prize winning microbiologist E.O. Wilson, who was 87 when he wrote it, is now 90, and is in full command of his faculties. I want to be him when I grow up. The book is called The Social Conquest of Earth. Wilson uses all available sources to trace the history of life on the planet from the emergence of single cell organisms out of the primordial slime to the current day. And he concludes, he basically says, you know, I've always been one of these guys warning of the next bad thing happening and how much species destruction there is, but I'm basically optimistic. Because if you look at the history of all life on the planet, there have been four species that have defied every chance that was given to destroy them. They have endured. Ants, termites, bees, and people. And he said the only thing they have in common is that of all species that have ever existed on planet Earth, these are the greatest cooperators. There's a fascinating story in the press last week about uh, out of the 43,000 species of spiders on the planet, 25 have evolved to become cooperators instead of loners and how much more impactful they are. In other words, stay out of their nets. They're much bigger. <laughs> but anyway, and Wilson tells us about species of ants in rainforests that sense when predators are about to take them over and some of the ants will go up on the tallest blade of grass and sacrifice themselves so that everybody else can get away. About species of termites in hot climates who dig underground homes and drill five holes but will only go in and out of one. The other four are just for air conditioning. And how they won't go in at all when it's about to rain. They sense it. And we all know about the myriad cooperative patterns of bees which are threatened now by changing agricultural and other patterns. So there has been a decline in the bee population, but I think they will adapt and survive. He says in this book that people are the greatest of all cooperators because unlike ants, termites, and bees, we have consciousness and a conscience. We see the ramifications of what we do beyond our narrow existence. And we can imagine living differently. And he says, here I am approaching 90. He is 90 now, but he was 87 when he wrote the book. He said, I really am going to leave the earth basically optimistic about what will happen because of our penchant for cooperation. But he said that when we're under stress, we recoil from it and we want to hang with our own kind. And the truth is that we all have to keep expanding the network of people who are in our community, expanding our definition of who is us and shrinking the definition of who is them. And if you look at what's happened in the world, I'll say a little more about this in a moment, there's been a tendency in the aftermath of all this economic distress to see increasing political conflict and an increasing desire to withdraw from interaction with others. 